All right, so what is up guys? In this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a bot in Telegram. So let's go ahead and click on my current bot. This is the Code Palace bot. And as you can see, I already have a few messages, but if you type something such as hello and click on send, the bot will respond with a certain phrase. And if we ask for the time, it will give us the time and the date. But of course, if we write something random that the robot does not understand, it's going to tell us that it doesn't really know what we're saying. And these are all pre-made responses. So you can substitute this with your own machine learning or any custom phrase that you want. I'll show you how to do that later. And also, if you go to the icon, you can add your own custom photo and it will have a description and all of this good stuff. So that's what we will be making in this tutorial. So to get started, you're going to want to go ahead and open your Telegram app and click on the search bar because inside here, we need to search for the bot father. So just try to find this. And this is where we will be creating and getting the API key. And the first thing we have to do inside here is type in slash new bot and click on create a new bot. And it's gonna ask us what would we like to call it? And we'll just call it sample bot. And then we have to assign it a username and the username must end with the word bot. So we can call this ABC123 ABC bot and click on send. And it will say, congratulations, your bot has been created and it's going to give you this user token. So you're gonna to have to make sure to copy this because this will be your API key. But uh, before we move on from here, we're gonna ask for a slash help and click on send. So we can see what other commands we have. And I'm not gonna go over all of that right now, but as you can see, there is an option to set the user pick and set the about text and set the description. So if you want to do that, just click on those links and they will give you very clear instructions on how to change it. For example, if you want to set the about text, it's gonna say, choose a bot that you want to set it for. We'll set it for the new bot, ABC bot. And we'll say, I am ABC bot and click on send. And it will say success. The about section has successfully been updated. So you can go ahead and do the same thing for the other fields, such as the profile image, and that will be that. But let's scroll up again and copy the key that we just created. So make sure to copy that, as you can see, it has been copied. And then we have to go ahead and create a new Python project. So as you can see, we have a main.py file, but uh, we're not gonna use this yet because we're gonna create another file. And this one's just going to be for the constants. So we're gonna call it constants. And inside here, we can type in API underscore key. And we're just going to create a pair of apostrophes and insert our API key there. And this is just going to be to keep things simple for later in case we need to use this API key again. Then we're gonna create another Py file and this is going to be used to handle the responses. So we'll just call this responses. And inside here, the first thing we want to do is import from date time. We want to import the date time. And then we're going to create a function that is going to be called sample underscore responses. And it needs an input text because that will be used to create a message or to create a response. And the user message is going to equal the string of the input text. And we want this to be lowercase since Python will recognize a uppercase letter and a lowercase letter as two completely different letters. So it's important we make sure that the user doesn't have to worry about capitalizing their words correctly. Then down here, we're going to type if the user message is in, let's pretend they say hello, or they say hi, or they say sup, for example, if the user message we write has these words inside it, then we are just going to go ahead and return. Hey, how's it going? And that will take care of our first response. Then we can go ahead and copy this and create another response such as who are you and who are you with a question mark. And then I just cancel this last one because that will be enough for the example. And we will write, I am ABC bot. And that's all it will respond. Now let's create a function that gives the user the time in case the user wants to ask for the time. So if user message is in time or time with a question mark, then we will get the local time, which is gonna be date time dot now. And we want to format this string. So we're gonna type in and create a new variable, which is going to be date time. And that's going to equal now string formatted time, or I believe that's what it means. And we're going to insert 
the format that we want. So we want to get the day first, and then we want to get the month, and then we will go ahead and get the year. And for the hours, we'll go ahead and first get the hour, of course, then the minutes, and then the second. So this will format the time for us to a readable format. And we can go ahead and return the string of date time. And finally, if none of these messages were recognized by the bot, we want to return a message that shows that it did not understand what we said. So I don't understand you or something along those lines. And of course, these are sample responses that you can change with whatever logic you want. This is just to show you that you can insert any string as a response and eventually you can hook this up to machine learning if you know how to do that. But for the purposes of this video, I think it's very straightforward and very easy to implement. So we'll stick with this. And finally, we can go to our main.py file. And before we continue, let's go to our terminal and we need to call pip install python dash telegram dash bot. And then we can close that once it has successfully installed. The next thing we have to do is import our constants as keys. And then we're going to get from telegram dot extensions. We will import everything to keep things simple. And then we should also import the responses as R. Then the first thing I want to do is print that our program has started. So we can say bot started. And then under that, we're going to create a start command because we can also create commands for a robot in case you want to do slash help or slash start. It will have some helpful text for your bot. So we'll just write this and we need to insert an update and the context. So inside here, we need to type in update dot message dot reply underscore text. And inside we have to type type something random to get started with an exclamation mark. Then we can just copy this and paste it right under. But this time we will call it help command. And we will write if you need help, you should ask for it on Google exclamation mark. Next, let's go ahead and create a function that handles the messages and gives the user a reply. So to do this, we'll type in definition handle message and that's going to take an update and a context of course and i believe actually that the context is not necessary anymore for the recent versions but i'm just going to include it because i don't want the tutorial to break for no reason and let's continue so inside here we're going to type that the text is going to equal the string of the update dot message dot text and then we want to make sure it is in lowercase. So we'll call dot lower. And then we will get the response, which is going to equal r dot sample responses. And we are going to insert the text that we've sent to the user, and then we can go ahead and update dot message. And I accidentally added an extra s here, let's take that back. But uh, we go ahead and call update dot message. And inside here we call reply text and we insert the response. <clears throat> so this receives the text from the user, this processes it, and this puts it back out to the user. Then we're going to create a function that logs the errors. So we're going to type in def error and that's going to take an update and a context. And in case anything goes wrong, we are just going to format this string and write updates, insert the update here, caused error context dot error. Then we need to go ahead and create the main function. So we're going to call def main and let's make some space. And the first thing we want to do is create an updater. And this updater is going to start the bot. So updater and here we're going to call our keys dot API key. And we need to go ahead and write users context and set that to true. And again, I believe that was for older versions, but I'm just going to use that now because that's how I wrote the program for this tutorial. Then down here, we are going to create a dispatcher, which is going to equal updater dot dispatcher. And then down below, we're going to make sure that the robot has the commands that we specified. So we're going to call dispatcher dot add handler and it's going to be a command handler. 
and then we can give it a title. So the first one we want to give it is a start title and that's going to be for our start command. But make sure you don't include the parentheses at the end because we do not need those. Then we can go ahead and copy this and paste it right under. And this is going to be the help command that we had right above. Then we have to go ahead and create a handler for the messages. And this is going to be called a message handler. And inside here, we are first going to call the filters.text. And then we need to add the text we want to respond, which is the handle message. Then we are going to call error handler, And we are going to add the error. And finally, we can add the code that starts the program, such as the updater.startPolling. And inside here, you can add a interval that you want the robot to check for updates. So if you put 60, that will wait 60 seconds before checking for user input. If you put five, it will wait five seconds before checking for the next message. And it does it every five seconds. So maybe if you want to delay the bot from sending too much info, you can do this. But if you want an instant reply, just don't put anything or add zero. So it just checks all the time. Then we have to go ahead and call updater.idle. And I believe this is just to make sure that it continuously stays active, even if nothing's happening. But uh, I wouldn't be able to explain too much about that. And finally, let's go ahead and call this main function. And with that being done, we can go ahead and run this program. And hopefully there are no errors. So, so far, as you can see, the bot has been started. And now if we actually go to our application, and I forgot what I named the bots, I really hope I can find it. ABC, one, two, three, ABC, bot. And as you can see, it is right there. So that's how you find the bot. And once we start it, it should start the start command. And it says type something random to get started. And we can also do that for the help command. So let's go ahead and type in help. And I messed up because I kept start here twice. So make sure to change the command to help and then rerun the program. So let's go back here. And then we do slash help and click on enter. And it will say, if you need help, you should ask for it on Google. But of course, this can be a place where you can tell the user how to use the bot in case you have some very special functionality. And then let's write uh, time and click on enter. It will give us the date. Who are you? Question mark. Send a message. I am ABC bot. And then let's type something it doesn't really understand. And as you can see, it's going to write, I don't understand you in case there's some text that the bot does not know how to handle. So there's a lot you can do with this bot. And the key point of this tutorial is that you can really play around with this handle message function because it can easily turn into AI or some other functionality. It can include links and it can do so many things. But uh, I believe this was a very easy introduction to how to use the Telegram bot. And if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to leave it in the comment section below. And with that being said, thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you.